better, better. <laughs> hey everybody, my name is Mark. Welcome back to 2000 Hours of Banjo. That was Gentle On My Mind, an arrangement I got from Eddie Collins and his YouTube channel, link to his video below. And if you didn't see my last video and <laughs> Based on the view counter, you probably didn't see it. But this is how I was playing Gentle On My Mind just 18 days ago. Check it out here. D minor. G7. See. Now, two things from this. One, I'm getting a little better at editing or video editing. I was able to do picture in picture, which I haven't been able to do before. I just learned how to do that. Uh, and it's pretty cool. Actually, now speaking of it, check this out here, watch. White balance. I didn't know what white balance was, but now I can do it. So hopefully all my videos moving forward will be white balance. Apparently it's something along the lines of the human eye knows how to register the color white in different lighting conditions, but digital lenses like what's in the camera recording me now has trouble doing it. So you have to adjust for that and that's called white balance. I think that's what white balance is. That's as close as I can get to it. And really I don't care, but moving forward, my videos will be white balance. So if it's been a thing that's been bothering you, have no fear. I am learning how to video edit while I run this YouTube channel. All right, but moving back to the second thing that you should have noticed is that I'm improving. I'm improving. The first time that I played Gentle On My Mind on the channel was 18 days ago. And I would say that what I did in just the beginning of this video is a vast improvement. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, no kidding, Mark. Uh, the last video was 566 hours of practice. This one is at 596 hours, getting close to that 600 hour mark. 596 hours, that's 30 hours. You've been practicing that song for 30 hours. You should be better at it. And in fact, you should probably be a little bit more better than what you were today. But what if I told you I didn't play? or practice 30 straight hours or 30 hours on Gentle On My Mind. And in fact, I did not. Most of my practice, I do practice about an hour and a half to two hours a day, two hours if I can manage it. But I'm not practicing or spending all that time on a new song like Gentle On My Mind. I've got a lot of other drills to practice. I'm practicing to make sure I'm keeping up and improving on my old songs. I'm practicing to try to improve the tone of my old songs and tr improve the speed or increase the speed. I'm also practicing, you know, with the metronome, doing metronome drills and practicing with the backing track from Strum Machine. And so there's a lot of other things that I'm practicing in that hour and a half to two hours. In fact, the amount of time that I'm spending on Gentle On My Mind is about 10 minutes per practice. Now, this is how it works. I choose a song that I wanna learn next and I kind of get the arrangement, the tablature memorized so I can just focus on learning how to play it. And then in the next lesson with my instructor, Mike, I we, we talk about it. We talk about the new song and where I'm having problems. In this particular case, you may have noticed that I was having a problem with the chord progression from C to D minor. Now, Sorry, street noise. 
See, this is, uh, for Gentle On My Mind, I tuned the fourth string down from, uh, sorry, from D to C. So the C chord now is, is simply this. With the fourth string tuned to D, it would have been this. This is the C chord. But now that the fourth string is tuned, tuned down to C, this is the C chord. So going from C to D minor was the big issue. So what did we do? Well, we discussed it. We discussed the issue. We focused on it and we developed a drill, basically running loops on just that transition from C to D minor. So that's C moving to D minor and then back to C. And then D minor again. And the idea here is not to practice like I'm demonstrating it now, but actually to try to practice it in time. And of the 10 minutes that I was spending of my, on my practice on Gentle On My Mind, I was dedicating a whole 50% or five minutes of that practice just on that chord progression from C to D minor. The rest of the song, which I don't know how to describe it except like these kind of like cascading uh, <laughs> bars. are actually pretty easy. Sorry, that's <laughs> such a pretty song. <laughs> Anyway, the rest of the song was pretty easy, so I was able to dedicate the other five minutes of the 10 minutes to the rest of the song, but focus just on that trouble spot for five minutes total on the C to D minor. So if you think about it over the span of 18 days, 10 minutes would be three hours, and then actually on the trouble spot that I've been working on, five minutes every day for 18 days, that was only an hour and a half, so literally, I only practice an hour and a half on that the toughest part of the song and that worked wonders over the span of 18 days. What's crazy is <laughs> you keep hearing that this uh, the the key to progress is, you know, you got the consistency, the practicing every day, um, no matter how many minutes. I, I kind of think this proves it. I, I really do. Like I really just dedicated five minutes a day to the hardest part of that song. And after about two and a half weeks, I've gotten significantly better. The key being not the duration of the practice, but that I was doing it every single day. And that led me to where I am today, which is a lot better than I was just 18 days ago. So really cool, and I think that if you're like me and you're trying to learn an instrument and you're a working guy or girl and you have your eight hour day and then you have your chores, your dishes, your vacuuming, the you know handling the dogs and stuff like that, if you've got a busy schedule and you think that, ah, oh, well, you know, it's not worth picking up my banjo because I've only got five, 10, 15 minutes to practice, pick it up, pick it up and, and practice. Every day, I think that is the key, is trying to get that consistency of picking up your banjo and practicing every day, even if it's just five minutes. It, I, I think this proves it, that even just five minutes a day can pr keep that progress wheel turning and improving your skill on learning the instrument that you're trying to learn. All right, well, enough preaching for that. Um, other things that are going on, I'm... <laughs> I'm trying a new set of strings. So um, this is only the second time I've restrung my banjo at, we're at now six, almost 600 hours. 
So a set of strings I'm, I'm using for 300 hours, that's probably too much time on a set of strings. So I'll probably start swapping strings every 100 hours or every 200 hours. I also like cleaned up the banjo, wiped it up, cleaned the, the banjo head a little bit. It was just some uh, Windex and a cloth to kind of cr clean up the uh, smudging and stuff like that. Um, but I'm, I went with a different set of strings. I went with this brand here. I don't know if that is coming through. And they're slightly thicker than the Deering brand strings that I had on this. Now, what's interesting is I didn't think it would make a huge difference because it's going from like, uh, I don't know, like a 12 to a 13 or whatever. It's, it didn't seem like that big of a difference, but boy, is it a big difference. A, there's a lot more tone and strength and power in the strings, it seems like. B, they bend a little less. So when I was doing Cumberland Gap, I had that issue where uh, oof, when, I, when I go to this uh, chord position, I was kind of nudging the string out of the way. It's a little bit more resistant to that, so I'm not nudging it as much. Now that's kind of a cope. My, I don't want to rely on a heavier string to keep me from a bad habit. I want to learn to not bend the string regardless of how heavy or light the strings are. So I still need to work on that. The other thing that I thought was really cool, it, well, not really cool actually, I thought my fingers had been kind of accustomed <laughs> to fretting. But once I put on these heavier, heavier strings, I had to break in my fingertips almost all over again. It took a lot less time. In two weeks, my fingers are fine, but my fingertips were tender for the first week or so on these new strings. The other thing is this one has like a gold or bronze uh, fourth string. It's like a phosphor bronze or whatever like that. And I think it was pretty cool, but right off the bat, since it stands out so much, from the other strings and I still rely on a little bit of a visual, you know, eye hand coordination to locate my frets. That D, that, that orange string was throwing me off. My eyes were going directly to it and I was kind of losing my way with the strings, but I adapted pretty quick in about a week or so. Um, the other thing, and this just may be me. Uh, so if it is, then it is, but does anybody else bleed every time they change their strings? Now granted, I've only changed my strings twice, but each time I've bled. And what happens is, you know, I, I detension the string, I clip it. This, this portion that is hooped to the tail piece is fine. Then I get to this piece where I'm like unraveling it, but there's a still a curled piece that I need to pull through the eyelet and the tuner. And when I do, it snaps back and it, it, like a scorpion, you know, and it just stung me and uh, got <laughs> punctured my finger and I started bleeding just like the first time. So I need to, I don't know, wear gloves, be a little bit more careful or something like that. But if you're not the only one, if I'm not the only one that bleeds when they change their strings, let me know in the comments. Now, lastly, uh, and I don't talk about subscriptions or subscribers that much, but we're close to 500 subscribers. I think today we're at 591, or no, I'm sorry, 491. We're really close to that 500 mark. So I did get the channel a little bit of a gift for when we reach the 500 mark. So if we get the subscribers up to 500, I'll present that gift on the channel to show you what it is. Um, and then lastly, I guess, uh, is we're close to 600 hours. So as tradition, I'll be doing my blindfold test to see if I can play certain songs blindfolded. It's kind of a dumb tradition that I started where I'm doing that every 200 hours. So I did it last at 400 hours. I'll be doing it again at 600 hours. We're really, really close to that. And we're moving quite along. I am able to hit that hour and a half and sometimes two hours a day of practice. It is a lot of practice. And I know a lot of people can't do that, but I'm trying to fit it in where I can. On the weekends, I, I can tend to get the two hours in. On weekdays, it's a struggle, but I can get that hour and a half in. So anyway, we're, we're moving quite along pretty good. I think we're going to hit that, that mark of 200, around, uh, sorry, 750 hours by the end of the year, which will get me caught up from the three and a half months I took off when I injured my finger. Anyway, I've got some practice to do. I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.